What up? How is everyone doing? It has been far too long since I have done this. You know where you're at. This is the World of Trash podcast. We reside at www.worldoftrash.co.uk. If you want to contact us right here, or contact me, because it's just me here today. If you want to contact us here at the email, send your emails to podcasts at worldoftrash.co.uk. My name is Stevie, also known as Trash, also known as many other things. But mainly trash from my days of being a hardcore DJ or just someone that moans about the hardcore scene. So as I may have mentioned, we are back. This is the old podcast format. If you're one of our old subscribers on iTunes or anything like that, then you know the deal. You know what it is. This is back to the old school. The only difference today is that it's just me and I don't have Break Counter sitting next to me. Although... In the future, Mr. Break Counter shall be returning to the show, which is awesome. But for today and for the return, it is just me and my laptop full of common creative commons music, whatever the hell the license is called. But it's free, and that's why I use it. Because if we use anything else, we'll get copyright striked, we'll get f in the A, all sorts of stuff. That's not good. We don't want to do that. I need to try and keep this fresh. Keep it free of copyright strikes and kind of entertaining. So let's hope that I can deliver. I forgot to turn the music up. This music's bass pack by B Film. Again, it's one of these Creative Commons songs. If you go out on the internet and you're looking for music, there's so much free music out there. So when I do like radio shows and stuff, I don't like music. I mean, it's cool to use music that everyone likes and what I like, but the fact is, you get in trouble for it and I don't want to get in trouble I want to be a good boy so I go to the internet and I find all this free music that can be used and it's really cool it makes me feel like a modern day John Peel and it is now I realised I should have installed my pop guard properly but it's okay I'll just try and not pop much poppity pop right that's it I'll have too much fun with that So what is the plan for episode 1 of this Trashcast Weekly relaunch? Well, I have got lots to talk about. In the background, let's turn this music down a little bit. Because there's nothing worse than dead air. I hate dead air. See, as long as you've got a bit of music in the background, it makes it a lot better. So what are we going to talk about today? As I said, let's get let's get to the topics, because I'm just rabbling crap here. First on the agenda, we've got to talk about North Korea's test site, which has potentially collapsed. And it's quite a serious situation that could develop into an even more serious situation. Just like how we mentioned Ebola and Liberia years ago, and then it became a crazy thing which everyone was worried about. So take heed. When we pull stuff out our ass, it makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, there's a... We've got some news on this North Korean test site, which is quite serious, actually. I'm going to talk a little bit about. A, I'm going to talk a little bit about something I am working on. That was just the worst take ever. I'm going to leave that in just to punish myself, because I need to get back into the flow of recording live and doing stuff live like a radio show. So yeah, I'm going to talk about my documentary, which I am making right now, because since I used to do the podcasts, which man, it must have been a few years ago now. I became a student, I'm a media student at Aberdeen's glorious Robert Gordon's University, and at the the moment, one of the courses I'm doing is documentary discourse, and for that, obviously, I have to make a documentary, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the released JFK files, which obviously the CIA made public thanks to Senior Trump. There's some interesting things in that JFK files, but not related to JFK. We're going to talk about that, and... I'll briefly go over this week's WWE Raw because I'm a wrestling fanatic. I need to do it. It's like right now, me me, and WWE Wrestling just now. It is a curious relationship because I am pretty much just burned on the product, period. WWE has just, it's killed my interest. Raw has just become, just it's just so boring. Like I don't even watch the whole of Raw now. 
I just watch it and skip through most of it. But basically, skip to the the, uh, the end of the second hour and then skip to the third hour to see if there's anything that needs to be watched. But sadly, at the moment, it is crap. All the good people they have, they're making them crap. Just negative, negative, negative. And of course, this week, Stephanie McMahon returned. So I was I was ready to just put my head through a window. Because her character is just, like, one of the worst written characters on TV at the moment. It's just, it's a char- I mean, she's a character and sh- she can do anything she wants with no recourse. Which is the craziest situation ever. I mean, who does that? Who in a workplace does that? No one does that. I mean, even politicians are getting into trouble for for stuff that's nowhere near, like, well, she, well actually, that's a lie. The politicians have been up to some quite nasty stuff, so it's good to see that they're getting their comeuppance. But anyway, I digress. I was talking a load of crap there. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about Raw. What else am I talking about? I was going to talk about South Park, but yeah, I'll talk about South Park next week. I'll talk about South Park every week, which is a perfect opportunity to plug my YouTube channel. It's called Margin Stevie, because everything I do now, like personally, I moved from using the name Trash, because, well, it's not really a, a marketable name, is it? I mean, who wants to listen to Trash? Not many people. So I decided I'd keep the Trash name just for, like, when I'm, like, doing DJing or music and stuff like that. And I thought I'd switch to using my God-given, well, my parental, my parental-given name, whatever the freaking word. You wouldn't think I'm doing media, eh? I can barely speak sometimes. But yeah, I'm using the name my mother and father gave me, which is not Stevie, but it is Stevie, but it's actually Steven. But I think Steven's one of the most boring names on the planet. There's, like, a million Stevens. And they're never really that entertaining. I mean, we've got Steve O's. Steve O's are always entertaining. But Stevie, Stevens? Nah. So I went with Stevie. It's more marketable and I like it. So that's cool. So yeah, my YouTube channel is called Margin Stevie. Links and everything will be here. Click it. Go and subscribe. Listen and watch my videos. If you're a fan of South Park, then the, the, video, the channel's for you. Because I do weekly rundowns and reviews of South Park. I look for any theories, I look for any story elements. I mean, this season, sadly, they've ta- to- they have taken away the whole story element. So it's just back to the old school one-shot episodes, which I actually really like. But th- the consequence is, they don't really have much to talk about in videos when it comes to theories now in South Park. So it's a case of enjoying South Park and hoping that people get back into it, because I think a lot of people got burned in the last season of South Park. But again, I digress. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the music up for a little bit. I'm going to have a drink of coffee, sip of coffee for the working dude. And I'm going to play a song. This one is called Run the Tape and it is by Asthmatic Astronaut. This should be good. So this song is maybe not as exciting as I thought it would be. This is maybe just one of those background tracks, so we're just going to turn that down a little bit. And before I get into the next segment, I'm going to plug you all. If you like wrestling, if you like Scottish wrestling, which currently is one of the biggest buzzes in the wrestling scene, 
then come and check out my other podcast, which is Trash Talk Wrestling. So I create that podcast. I produce it for oswtv.co.uk. They post all the results and all the event listings for every wrestling event in Scotland. So if you need the scoop on anything wrestling in Scotland, come to my podcast and you will get all the news you could want. I mean, that was probably the worst plug I could have done for my own podcast. Glorious. Anyway, fudge that. Let's get to topic number one, because this is a crazy topic. This has actually blown my mind. Now, as many of us will know, North Korea have been testing nuclear missiles. They have the bomb, and they are testing it. Kim Jong-un seems intent. He just wants nuclear weapons. He needs to test them. And of course, if you're developing these things, you need a test ground. So, the North Koreans have been using the, let's see if I can get this right, Pungi Ri test site. Now, I'll probably butcher that name. It's P U N G G Y E dash R I. Pungi Ri. I think it's I think it's that. Anyway, that's their test site. North Korea have been using this test site for the last year or so to test their nuclear missiles. Now, the test site. It's basically a mountain which they have tunnelled into and they just set the bombs off in the mountain. Similar to what other countries have done. It's it's a common practice when testing big things like this because you don't want fallout to be in the air. So, of course, following the path of nuclear armament development, I think that's the right way you could say it, North Korea have been testing their nukes in a mountain. And this week, it has been reported that, well, it was reported actually a few weeks ago, but it's, it's for some reason, it's a story that's not really made it much into the media. It's been, I mean, I read about it on the independent website, but I've not really heard much about it on TV, at least on like BBC or Sky or anyone else or ITV. I've not heard them mention it this much, but I mean, if you look online, there's quite a lot of news about it. I mean, I just looked before I did the show to see if there's any updates on the story and I mean the current update I'm looking at is on the independent website so it's independent.co.uk and their headline is North Korea tunnel collapses at nuclear test site could you sorry I'll read that again I'm dyslexic I get to do that North Korea tunnel collapse at nuclear test site could cause serious radiation leak at least a hundred workers fear dead following tremors at the Pungiri test site last month so that is our most updated headline that I could find for this. Basically, as the title may suggest, their tunnel has collapsed. Now, I, I've been looking up this story, trying to find out what is going on there. Like, who the people are that are trapped? Why are they trapped? What's happening? And here's... Like, I don't know how factual this is, because we're talking about North Korea. I never... I, most talk on North Korea is speculative. So we're speculating here. Reports that were going about were that the workers that were at the site are all concentration camp workers. And that makes sense with the common narratives you hear about North Korea. They're always, they they love their slave labor. They've got concentration camps. I mean, if you commit a crime against the North Korean system over there, it's not just you that goes to jail. Your family goes to jail. Then your descendants go to jail. And their descendants go to jail. It's insane. Hence, they've got loads of concentration camps and the such. And a lot of their work in this field is done by concentration camp workers. Supposedly. But I kind of agree it. Because the North Korean regime is not just using their slave laborers here. If you go online, you can find reports. Vice have got a few documentaries about this that are really worth watching. The North Koreans send their workers to, like, Russia, Poland. You even have North Korean slave labour workers fixing NATO boats in Poland. Mind-blowing. But anyway, I digress. The last test at the site... Well, the reported last test was at the 3rd of September. And the reports of the collapse came in pretty close to that. The initial report was that there was a hundred people trapped, so like people that were tunneling to make the tunnels were trapped. And then another hundred rescue workers went in and they were trapped as well, crushed. So 
Initially, I had read that there was potentially 200 people dead because there's potentially 200 people trapped. So if you're trapped in a tunnel that's potentially full of nuclear fallout, I wouldn't hold your chances very high of surviving, sadly. So yeah, 100 people trapped. Then they sent more in and they got trapped as well. My God, my voice is just going crazy. Yeah, it's not a very good situation. I mean, the worst part of this is that obviously this tunnel was drilled to test nuclear weapons so there's been a few nuclear blasts have happened in that tunnel now one of the consequences of nuclear blasts is nuclear fallout this is why they blow things up underground to protect the rest of humanity from the fallout well except for the people that are tunneling into that Kim Jong Un, he's not—he's not really big into work ethics or worker safety, you know. But as I'm rambling on about this and talking slowly, the main threat—I mean, obviously, the threat is that 200 people could be dead. That's horrible. That's like really horrible. That is the local threat to the people there. The threat to the world at large is the fact that this mountain is collapsing. And in this mountain, there is a lot of radiation. Now, the reports I read initially came via a Japanese TV station called Ashi TV. So they were reporting it that the North Korean mountain collapse could cause the mountain to what they call top off. Now, if the mountain tops off, it's, as the name may suggest, it means that not only does the mountain collapse, but the top comes off. Now, if the top comes off the mountain, it is going to open up the hole where all the fallout is. And the threat now is that there's going to be masses of potential fallout, which is not good. Obviously, countries like Japan and China are nervous. This tunnel that's collapsed, it's not really near South Korea. It's a lot closer to China than it is South Korea because it's just north, so it's nowhere near so it's not near the south korea it's in the north of the country so it's potentially more of a threat to the people of china um i mean based on satellite imagery people are judging that there is a hollow space which ma which measures around 60 to 100 meters at the bottom of the mountains the mountain is called mount mantrap I'm sorry mount mantap mantrap would be an apt name for it I mean, the report I'm reading here goes on, says the nuclear tests are not thought to have caused any radiation damage to foreign countries so far, but scientists worry that the hollow space inside the mountain makes it unstable. Which, yeah. A Chinese nuclear weapons researcher called Wang Nian told the South China Morning Post last month, we call it taking the roof off. If the mountain collapses and the hole is exposed, it may let out bad things so of course i'm reading this paraphrasing from the in independent report on this which was posted today so it was on the 3rd of november so go and read that that is the source for here the report goes on about how north korea have stepped up their nu nuclear and missile tests over the past year as the international community has just moaned like crap about it no one's done a thing about it all we get is uh president trump tweeting at Kim Jong-un and then we get Kim Jong-un calling tweet an idiot we don't know where this is going to lead up I've got no idea what's going to happen here I mean best case scenario um I was reading yesterday that if North Korea become too much of a threat like this collapses and there's massive fallout or they do something really stupid then China has the right to go in with an army and take out the, the threat like so let's say this place is in threat of collapse and they're going to let another bomb off which is going to blow the mountain up and cause radiation to start leaking into china china have the ability to send in their own special forces to go in and take the site out and just obliterate it so best case scenario for just in general for the whole north korean situation i would say would be not for America to do anything to stop it, because America doing anything is going to anger China, it's going to anger Russia, and so forth. You're better let it, because like China, Russia, North Korea, they're all in the same sort of group, like the communist type countries. 
And if you mess with one, you're messing with them all. So it's not a good idea for America, a capitalist country, to go stopping stuff in North Korea because it's going to cause World War Three. The best scenario would be for North Korea to do something really stupid, which sadly would probably mean life's lost. But at the same time, if they do something that is too stupid, China can come in and take out their regime, basically, and possibly steer the country in a better direction than it's in now. Although the latest reports are that the best way to overthrow Kim Jong-un is not war, it is just by propaganda, by speaking to the people in North Korea, by getting DVDs to them, all that sort of stuff. Of course, watching outside videos, DVDs is illegal, but there is a massive trade of it in North Korea. And this is the way analysts are saying now, it's like, look, let's just tell the people that their regime sucks. It's like you're being lied to, you've been brainwashed, which is the, si the situation. But that, that is the whole North Korea mountain collapse situation in a nutshell. In a very loose, cracked, and not very lucid nutshell. But a nutshell all the same. As I said, I got a lot of information from the independent website. Just, just go online in this. Just type in North Korea tunnel collapse. You will get a ton of news on this. It's a pretty big situation. And, and, and as I said, it's a situation that is still not over. It's still very much developing. Because when a mountain starts collapsing, it's not like a... It could take weeks, it could take months, and if this hole is uncovered and the roof is taken off, then as the Chinese man says, bad things can happen, there's bad things we do not want to happen on this planet. So it's time for me to take a little drink, I'm going to turn the music up, and we're going to play Mr. Emerson's New Tattoo by Elvis Hellrod. Okay, so that was not Mr. Emerson's new tattoo. That was still Aitken Basin Damask Cry. I hate words like that. I really do hate words like that. I think it says Damask Chris, Damask Cry. They've made the word up, but that's what makes a good title. And titles are something I'm going to be talking about next. So I'm going to be talking about a project I'm working on. Because as I previously alluded to, I am now a media student. And as a media student, I have a job to create some media. So, the first bit of media I have been tasked to create is a documentary. Now, when thinking about making a documentary, it, I wanted to do something different, because I am a massive fan of documentaries. Well, I I thought I was a fan of documentaries. I thought I knew a lot about documentaries until I started a documentary class and realised I knew I knew a lot about Louis Theroux and like British TV documentaries, but I didn't really know that much about other documentaries. Thankfully, it's not an issue because it's getting sorted. I'm working on it. I've learning a lot about documentaries. I've learned a lot about documentaries even. <laughs> I need to learn about freaking speaking, but that's another problem for another day, which I'll have to confront before I record this documentary. God damn it. But anyway, did you hear the pen? Yes, that was a pen being thrown. This is going to be a common thing. What the hell is that song in the background? It sounds horrible. Let's get it. Mr. Emerson's new tattoo. That is shite. Grief and sleep ghosts. Let's hope it doesn't get spooky. But anyway, yeah. What the hell am I talking about? I am making a documentary. What am I making a documentary about? 
I am making a documentary about making a documentary. Yes, it is very meta, quote unquote. And deliberately so. As I said, I wanted to make something different. I've seen a lot of documentaries. Oh, there we go. I was wondering where the music went. Yeah. So I've seen a lot of documentaries and I've always wanted to make proper documentaries. Because I thought a documentary was a thing that only people on TV made. It turns out that most of the videos I've ever made are actually a form of documentary. Yay. I am a documenteur. But yes, it is time for me to create a proper documentary. So it got me thinking, and I was like, what do I make a documentary about? Do I make it about, like, alcoholism? Do I make it about some sort of pertinent social justice topic? Do I make it on my views on things like no platforming and all that sort of anti-free speech sort of stuff? No, not, not anti-free speech. Well, yeah, it is anti-free speech, but that's another topic for another day. I don't agree with no platforming. But I'm not going to make a documentary about that, because I want the documentary to be worth watching, so... I went back to things that interest me, and one topic that interested me a lot was the making of a documentary. I thought it would be good to show a documentary which shows the making of a documentary. And I don't just mean like a making of video, you know, like you get the making of Star Wars, the making of Blade Runner. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be, well, I guess it is, but it's a documentary about making a documentary. That's the title, that's the working brief that I'm working on, that's the idea I've came up with. So, I've been talking to people that know more about documentaries than me, mainly my lecturers and people within RGU's media studies bubble. And I was told that you should have some sort of focus and some sort of story. So I went back to all my old research and I found a topic that I love. The topic is Aberdeen's Electric Subway Tunnel. Now, if you're not in Aberdeen, or you're not from Aberdeen, or you don't care about Aberdeen, this will mean nothing to you. But if you're from Aberdeen, let me ask you the question. Did you know there is a tunnel that runs from Holborn Street right along to Crown Street, then down Crown Street to the bottom where the power station used to be in the 1900s? I'm guessing your answer is no. Because this is such an obscure topic that I found out about years ago. Now, I first found out about this electric subway in... I can't remember where I found out about it, actually. For years, I heard a story that there was a subway that ran from Union Street to Holborn Junction. And I was like, a subway? I thought subway equals trains equals... What the hell? There, You mean there's a secret train line that runs all the way under Aberdeen? So after a few years of thinking... There was a subway train underneath Aberdeen that was somehow built in the 1800s, which in retrospect now is a bit stupid. I found out that the word subway can be used for other tunnels as well, you know, for like people walking or things being put in. So it turns out that this tunnel does exist, but it's not a subway that's for people or traffic. It is a subway for cables. It's called the Aberdeen Electric Cable Subway. Now, this tunnel was built in, I believe it's between 1897 and 1903. I can't remember the year. I think it's maybe 1900, like, on the dot. As I say, this is really, really old. And no one knows about it. And so ever since I found out about it, it's just blown my mind. I mean, if you're in Aberdeen and you go to Holborn Street, there's a bar called the Foundry. If you, like, outside the Foundry, there's this blue tower, so... It looks like an old, ornate, Victorian streetlight kind of thing, but it's blue. And it's just a random tower, and it just looks like a little statue. That is not a statue, and it's not just there to look good. That blue bit there, that is the ventilation shaft for that tunnel. And underneath that ventilation shaft is a stretch of tunnel that was created with the vision to look like an Art Deco sort of Parisian subway tunnel. So, yeah, it's pretty damn cool. My mission at the moment, within my make, like, obviously, to show the making of a documentary, I have to make a documentary, so I can show the making of a documentary, which is just a bit strange. I don't know why I've did this to myself. I, I honestly don't know, and the more I'm researching into the tunnel, and the more, I mean, the, the amount of information I'm getting on this tunnel now, going back to it and following the leads I had before, is amazing. 
I'm getting so much information. I've spoke to people that have wrote books about it. I've, all sorts. I mean, I'm not going to get big-headed, but I may end up being the expert on this tunnel by the end of this. And hopefully, fingers crossed. Now, can everyone that's listening to this, please cross your fingers for me. Let us hope I can get a photograph. I want to get in this tunnel. That is my mission. I mean, if I don't get in this tunnel, meh, it's all right. The documentary is about making a documentary, so it'll still work. But I want to get in the tunnel. This is closure for me. I've been looking at this t- topic for years now, and I want to get in this tunnel. And this is the documentary I am making just now. So uh, this documentary should be finished for around Christmas time. It has to, it has to be submitted for mid-December. Hopefully it'll be finished before then. And um, I'm hoping that I can post it on my YouTube channel or something like that. I don't know, but there is a student film festival at the beginning of next year. So, fingers crossed, I can get a good film made. And I'm going to get entered into this student film festival. And I can maybe get to see something I've made on a bigger screen than I've got at university or at home. You know, like... A proper movie size projector it's not the silver screen but it's a start isn't it i've never made anything like this before and i'm looking forward to it so as the podcast goes on you're going to get updates on my documentary today is not an update today today was a primer i'm just telling you what's happening with this documentary and with that it's time for a bit more music which seems to have just started up nice and loud itself This is Rain Scope Down by Leggy Salad. I'm not even joking you, Leggy Salad. I'll take this time, this opportunity, this momentary lapse in podcast to promote the crap out of myself and everything we do here. If you're listening to this, most likely you know where to find us. You can find this podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio. You can find it via our Libsyn page, which is where everything comes from. And of course, the main homepage, the hub for everything is worldoftrash.co.uk And if you have anything you would like mentioned on the podcast, have you got a topic you would like to hear me rant about? Do you have a question for me? Because you can ask me any question you want. I am happy to try and answer absolutely any question the world has to offer. Contact me, the podcast, at podcasts. Sorry, why did I say dot? podcasts at worldoftrash.co.uk and the podcast email will come right to me I will reply because I'm just a nice guy like that and we'll get something done and if you're a wrestling fan remember I have a podcast that covers Scottish wrestling that is on the podcast channel as well iTunes, iHeartRadio yada 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 it's everywhere it's real god damn it just like the topic we're about to talk about next, which is just crazy. So, unless you've been living in a bubble for the last few weeks, you will know that Donald Trump commanded that the CIA release the rest of the files on the JFK mystery. Now, straight off the bat, everyone just knew what was going to happen. It was We knew that there was going to be a ton of redacted names, and we were probably not going to get anything 
knew on the JFK murder. And that is actually the case. That is completely the case. All we got was a ton of redactions. We got nothing new on the JFK. The JFK fanatics are just like, man, this is just crap. But hidden within the JFK files was something, for me anyway, I thought was way more interesting. How about if I said Hitler escaped the Second World War? What the F? And that is apparently what happened. Now, again, just like the last story I talked about, if you go to the CIA website, so at CIA.gov, you can search their library. These files are all available there. I've literally got the picture on my screen right now. It's just called Hitler Adolf underscore 003 PDF. There is a photograph and there is the conversation with an agent called, now what was he called? Let me see if I can pronounce this. Similoid. Oh, oh, you can actually copy and paste right from the thing. That is cool. So, this is a crazy story. Loads of people, including me, have always believed that the way the Second World War ended was a bit weird. And that Hitler didn't commit suicide. I mean, why would he have committed suicide? There's no way. My belief has always been, and this is shared by a lot of people I know, that Hitler was allowed to escape at the end of the Second World War in exchange for technology. By that, I mean the nuclear technology they were working on, nuclear bombs, and the rocket technology they were working on. Because as we know, rockets like the V-2 ended up becoming like the Russian space rockets. So we've got all that. I mean, I'm not a master expert on what happened but everything, but everyone is allowed to have a theory. And my theory always matched the other bigger theory that Hitler was allowed to escape and he went to South America. So this has been talked about many times. I mean, I've seen, I've even seen them talking about this like on the History Channel. Like, one to stop speaking about alien Nazi technology, you'll maybe hear about them, oh, Hitler potentially escaped to North, uh, South America. And that's what I always believed. So I was like, well, why would he have killed himself? I'm sure that he was, he got a deal. Because there was never any proof that he was killed. Like, no one ever gave any evidence. They refused to give evidence. I think it was the Russians said they had him, but no one ever got proof. And this is why. Because he went to South America. So yeah, this week, in the JFK files, we have reports of a CIA agent who made contact with an SS officer that was living in Chile, I believe. And that SS officer was friends with the Führer, who was living there. And yeah, mind blowing. So let's read my notes, because I've got notes that I've written on this, and it's probably better that I just read my notes rather than reel it off the top of my head and make a total mess of it. So, this week, via the JFK files, which was mainly redundant, information that Hitler may have survived was released. Not only was their information released via this file, there is a photograph of an old, aged Hitler. So I'm not going to read out the whole address for that, but if you search Hitler Adolf 0003.pdf in Google, you will find it. So, my notes go on. A CIA agent was in contact with a man called Philip Citron, a former SS officer. This man knew a man called Adolf Shuttlemere who stayed in the town of Tunja, 85 miles north of Bogota. It goes on that Shuttlemare was known as the Führer, and there is a photo of him which pretty much confirms his likeness because it is an aged Hitler. I'm convinced that this is it, because when you see the photograph, it's like, come on, man. And it's right there, it's proof. It says that... Uh, the Führer, Adolf, Mr. Schottelmeyer, he lived with this Nazi group in 1954 before moving to Argentina, where every all the speculation about where he ended up was Argentina. And this confirms it. He ended up in Argentina in January 1955. 
Now, I implore you all, like, don't just believe anything I just say. Go and look at it yourself. I am right now on the CIA's website reading this. So, I mean, let's, I'll just read some of this, read a paragraph off to you. So, the agent was called, it's a funny word, Chimeloy, Ch Chimeloy, I can't say that. Let's see, the agent's friend stated that during the latter part of September 1955, a Philip Citroen, former C S German SS officer, stated to him confidentially that Adolf, Hi Adolf Hitler was still alive. Citroen claimed to have contacted Hitler about once a month in Colombia, sorry, not, not Chile, Colombia, on his trip from Marcelabo to that country as an employee of the KNSM, Royal Dutch Shipping Company. Citroen indicated to the agent's friend that he took a picture with Hitler not too long ago, but did not show the photograph. He also stated that Hitler left Colombia for Argentina around January 1955. Citroen commented that inasmuch as 10 years have passed since the end of World War II, the Allies could no longer prosecute Hitler as a criminal of war. Uh, okay, so that's the SSS. The SSS clearly thought that, look, 10 years is long enough. After 10 years, you can't do this for war crimes. Well, so much for that theory, because they're still doing SS people for war crimes. Crazy. On September 28th, 1955, the agent's friend, Serendipitously. It's one of these stupid words. I need to, like, I'm, I'm just, I don't know what it is today. I'm just not in a very good reading mood. I think I'm just too tired. I need sleep. And I need to learn these words. But anyway, the friend's agent obtained the photograph which Citroen referred to. On the 29th of September, 1955, the photo was shown to the agent for purposes of getting his reaction to the possible veracity of this fantastic story. Obviously, the agent was not in any position to make comments. Nonetheless, he borrowed the photograph long enough so that this station could take any action deemed advisable. Photostats, copies, of the picture were taken and are being forwarded. The photograph was to be returned to its owner the following day. The person on the left is alleged to be Citroen and the person on the right is undoubtedly the person which Citroen claims is Hitler. The back side of the photograph contains the following data. Adolf Schrittel, it's a different name this time, Schrittel Mayer, Tonga, Colombia, 1954. It's all there, people. It's really all there. This is a document that was secret until this week. It was archived by the CIA in July 2nd, no, uh, July 26th, 1963, sorry. They got this report in. This report was created on the 3rd of October, 1955. It's mind-blowing. It's like absolutely mind-blowing. It's There's so many conspiracies and stuff out there in the world that are just silly. But there's so many conspiracies out in the world that are real. And this is one of the real ones. This is one of the ones which people are always like, come on, man, this is just a stupid conspiracy theory. But hey, it's that much... It can't be that stupid if the SS... If the SS? <laughs> pretty much the SS. It can't be that stupid if the CIA have files on it, on their website, and a photograph of them. Insane. My mind was blown by this. As you can tell by the silence. My mind was blown wide open. All I can say is go and read it. It's just... It's one of these things. I mean, if you don't believe it, don't believe it. That's totally fair. Everyone is allowed their own opinion. But hey, if this stuff interests you, go and read it. Because it is damn juicy stuff. So I'm just going to play another song. I don't know what this one's going to be. Let's just play a random one. Let's play Tramp and Bass by Progum. And I'm going to go get another drink. Then I'll be back to do the last segment of the show, which is my brief rundown of Raw. And then I'll let you all go for the day. Back in a sec. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, again, I'm thinking, what the hell does this I put on? So that's not a, at all what I expected. I mean, it's quite rhythmic. I do like it, but hey. This is what happens when you dig up the internet's free music. As I said, this is the sort of stuff John Peel would have played, and he'd be like, hmm, yeah, nice. So yeah, I'm happy to play it. It's not really what I'd like, but you might like it. I don't know. I'm not the judge of music. I don't know what you all like. So let's get the last segment of the show done. This is the one for the wrestling fans. This is where I punish myself and have a look at what happened in this week's WWE Raw. So as I said at the start of the show, I am pretty burned out when it comes to WWE programming at the moment. And there's a consequence they're kind of burning me on wrestling as well. Which is a shame, because I bloody love wrestling. It's like one of the best forms of entertainment the world has. But regardless of my thoughts, I still watch Raw all the time. I, at the moment, I don't watch the whole of it. I basically just skip it. I skip the matches. What, I'll, what, I, what I often do is I'll just skip the matches. I'll watch the finish of the match to see who won, see what happens at the end, see what happens at the start. If there's any promos, I'll watch them. And the wrestling bit just seems like a... It just seems like filler at the moment. It's, it's really, really weird. I'm watching WWE more for the storylines than the wrestling. Because the wrestling's boring. I mean, they've got some of the world's best wrestlers. And they're still managing to bore people. I mean, how the hell does someone misuse Shinsuke Nakamura? If I start, I will rant. So let's know. Let's just go down and see what happened on Raw. So let's have a look at my notes. The show started off with Stephanie McMahon berating Kurt Angle. Effing boo! And that's not a boo because she's a, a bad guy. That's a boo because I hate that storyline. It's like, in what workplace would you have someone who could shout and berate you like that and not have some sort of recourse? And it's even worse that it's in the world of wrestling because she, her character is basically untouchable. Because she is female in the modern, in the modern current climate and in WWE there is no man on woman violence ever allowed ever so she's never ever going to get her comeuppance there's no female she doesn't do it females the females are never allowed to get any sort of comeuppance back on her so we've got a character who can be as mean as she wants and never gets anything done back and i absolutely hate that because if you're going to be bad in a storyline you need to get your comeuppance and she can't get her comeuppance and i hate it and the show started with her doing her usual bullcrap of berating a legend. It's bloody Kurt Angle, you know what I mean? Kurt Angle. And he's got to stand there looking like an idiot. Absolutely hate that stuff. I just hate every segment she's in. Mainly because of stuff like this. It's really uncomfortable to watch. Like, it's like, it's horrible. I put myself in that situation and be like, F off. Go away. Who do you think you are? You're my manager, but I don't mean you can talk to me like that. Anyway, Kurt Angle got berated. I hated that. Nia Jax returned. Meh. That is that is in my notes. Meh. Like, really. They're so much better. They just sacked Emma, but she's still there. It's amazing what happens when you're The Rock's cousin. Thankfully, we got a dose of Asuka this week. Asuka destroyed. Absolutely destroyed a jobber. What was her name? Stacey Cullen. Poor Stacey. It was a beautiful match. Asuka just kicked the living crap out of her. I could watch that all day. That was cool. I love squash matches with people getting the crap kicked out of them. Watch that all day. The Miz was on, which is awesome. Bo Dallas returns, which is awesome. It means he's. I was actually getting a bit worried about him because I was like, what's happening with Bo Dallas? He's been off TV for a long time now. He had mumps or meningitis. Thankfully, he's over it and he's back on TV. We get The Miz. He's always entertained me. I'm a fan of The Miz. I like The Miz. I think he's a great character. He's one of the best characters in WWE at the moment. And when it comes to talking, promos, that sort of stuff, it's it is almost unfair to put him in a promo battle with anyone in that company because he just slaughters everyone. He's brilliant. We got Finn Balor versus Cesaro. That was a decent match. I mean, it was a nothing match. It was decent. It was... I really got bored and skipped through it. At the end of the match, came came back, killed Finn with a tombstone on the ramp, which is like, man, what are you doing to Finn? <laughs> Why are you killing Finn, man? 
This is what I'm saying. They've got some of the world's best wrestlers. Finn Balor. And the, he's in a program with Kane. Kane. Know what I mean? Like, why? And he's getting beat by Kane. This is just stupid. Kane also killed Daniel Bryan, which was like a backstage segment. Now, let me get on at this, because this... Ugh, some stuff in production really annoys me. Now, this was just... This is just so stupid, right? Daniel Bryan was using an iPhone, and he's speaking on his iPhone. You could see that he was not talking. So this phone... He was on his phone. He's phoning someone, and the screen is lit up. Like, you can tell when you're using your phone... In it. I've been joined in the studio by Jack, the lad. When you're using an iPhone and you phone someone, you can tell if someone's been phoned because the green button does not sit on freaking screen and the light goes off when you put the phone next to your head. In this segment of television, for some reason, they completely forgot that with a camera looking at the phone the whole time. Daniel Bryan sitting speaking on the phone as if he's phoning Shane McMahon. But we can clearly see, and it doesn't help that it was in the dark, because it was Halloween and the lights went off. So you could visibly see that A, his phone was not dialing anyone, and B, that it wasn't, it, he wasn't phoning anyone, because it was lit up. You could literally see the numbers in the dial button. That, stuff like that just annoys me. That's just half-assed. Total half-assed. But we got Daniel Bryan on Raw, so that was cool. Although it seems he got killed by Kane, he seemed to get thrown through a table or something. I don't know, it was dark and it was Halloween, it was spooky. And we got Braun Strowman returning at the end of the match via a dumpster truck, which would just go and watch it on YouTube. It was fan freaking fantastic. He came back, the Miz Taraj and the Miz all got the crap kicked out of them. They're all dead. Braun is back. He is awesome. He is one of my favourites. That was pretty much it. Let's see the other notes I've got. So yeah, Bo Dallas returned. Yay! Joe versus Apollo Crews happened. Then Joe then choked out Titus. We got Enzo Amore and Gulak out. Gulak was in a match. They had a pretty funky promo at the start. Mickey James versus Alexa Bliss happened. As again, boring. Seth versus Kane. It was boring. The best match on the show for me was probably Tex Ferguson and Chad Too Bad. <laughs> A.K.A. Gallows and Anderson. Versus Mr. and Mrs. Claus, who was uh, Heath Slater and Rhino. This was a trick or street fight. Pumpkins, tables, it was just stupid as hell, but it was supremely entertaining. And then we got the rest of them, but the Miz section was at the end. The Miz bit was awesome, it was a great little Halloween segment where he's in the car, he's phoning people, they don't know what's happening. It was fun, it was stupid, but it was fun. The highlight of Raw was probably the news that Total Divas is returning next week, or this week, so expect me to be talking about Total Divas next week, but yeah. I, I can't lie, I really was not that interested in Raw. So my review of Raw has probably been really shit. That's my sh that's my S-bomb for the week, that. And that was it. If you want me to re review anything else in wrestling, remember to send me an email to podcasts at worldoftrash.co.uk. You can find everything at worldoftrash.co.uk. You can find me on Facebook, look me up, Margin Stevie or World of Trash. Margin Stevie if you're wanting to contact me direct. World of Trash if you want to contact the website. And of course, I'm on Twitter. I love Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. At Margin Stevie. This is the end of the show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I will be back next week talking more crap that you want to hear. I will see you all then. Cheerio!